guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, we're going to do a bunch of things, but all around 223 Remington. So, in my last video on the Auto Drum Powder Major, we loaded 357 Magnum on the Dillon XL650. A little bit tight with the primer tube, not a whole lot of clearance. This time we're going to load 223 Remington on the RCBS Pro Checker 5. We're also going to work with the Varmint Nightmare bullets that I just talked about for Mid South Shooting Supply. And I'm also going to try IMR 4166, which is one of the Enduron powders. These are the powders that are made in an environmentally responsible manner. They have the copper reduction agent and they also have a very very good temperature spectrum that they work over. They're temperature insensitive. So we're going to put these all together. We're going to put the auto drum on the RCBS Pro Trucker 5. Let's get going. So just a quick note, when you're using either the Lee Auto Disc or the Lee Auto Drum for rifle, you're going to need a rifle charging die. So what this does is it has the sliding collar inside. This is going to hit the case, ride the case up and down, and that's going to be ultimately what activates the case activated feature on either the auto disc or the auto drum. Okay, this is the auto drum. I just took this off of the Dillon XL650 where I was loading 357 Magnum like I showed in the last video. All we need to do now is swap out the drums for the Lee Auto Drum. So we're going to take off this thumb screw on the one side. Okay, make sure that we uh, retain the O-ring there. The drum is now just going to slide right out. I'm going to blow out any existing remains of uh, powder that might be in there. We're going to aim the nozzle at the input on the drum. And then, okay, so again, we got to be just a little bit careful here about our O-ring and make sure that that seats. So I'm going to actually kind of keep it vertical like this. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And then it just needs to be finger tight. Okay, now we're ready to set the depth. So I've just set the height of the rifle charge die. Now you wanna get it just so that at the top of the stroke, the case rotates the drum so that it's in its fully rotated position. Then this just drops right in just like a, a Lee auto disc. And what's nice about this setup is that you can get the rifle charge die at just the right index for the actuation of the drum. And you can still rotate the auto drum powder measure just like the auto disc powder measure, however you want it, and then tighten down on this, on this lock ring down here. Now I like to run my tool heads a little bit loose so they have a little bit of float. I might tighten that down uh, just a little bit. So now we can raise the ram. We see we have a full rotation of the drum. Just perfect. Okay, and one more time, this is what it's gonna look like. One last thing, we need to remove the disc connector. Now in the last video I showed with the Dillon XL650 and 357 Magnum, we used the safety chain and basically that prevents a double stroke from happening. Now since we're filling the case more than halfway in terms of its volume, we're actually filling it almost full because we're going to be using about 25 grains of IMR4166 here. We need to back this screw out and then remove the linkage here. So we're going to want to keep that screw and then lift this up and off. And I like to keep screws kind of where they belong. So I'm just going to kind of start this back in here so that it's something that's not going to get lost. Let's go ahead and fill the powder measure. Again, we're using IMR4166. This is one of the Enduron powders that's new. Looks a lot like powders like Varget. Use a lot of Varget for 223. It's a good, it's a good powder for that. Okay. Okay, so I just set my powder level to 25 as a charge and you almost have to see this to believe it. I just got three 25.0s in, in a row. So let's see where that's at. 24.7. Trying to wait for it to, uh, to dump each time. You can actually hear it really well. 24.7.
and in 24.7. So you can see here, it was adjusted slightly, but the consistency, actually, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. Okay, so everything is set up. This is a rock and setup. We got our RCBS TC sizer D primer and station number one. I've dialed in the, uh, the Redding indicator in station number two. I've got it set exactly for my trim length at zero so I can tell how far under or over I am. I've got the auto drum dialed in, as you saw. We, sh we threw three charges in a row that were exactly the same, which is great. I looked at my data again, 24.7 is gonna be good for this 4166 and the 55 grain bullet. The Hornady Cedar, it's got the sliding collar, it's got the micrometer, and then the TC, the cedar die with the taper crimp feature, I'm only using the taper crimp here, so I can adjust the seating depth and the crimp independently. So I just ran a test cartridge through. I've got a very nice, very slight crimp. I've got it going right into the cannula there. Everything's running real smooth, so let's uh, crank out some rounds. So I've got everything run up on the press. I just took one of the completed cartridges, dropped it into my Ellie Wilson case gauge for 223. We're looking good and everything's running smoothly. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some full progressive loading here. At the top, I gotta remember, wait just a second for the powder to drop through that small 22 caliber opening that 223 uses. I like to go slow and deliberate with rifle ammo. I'm not ever in a hurry. But I do save a lot of time compared to turret or single stage loading for sure. Smooth and steady, that's the way to go with the progressive. And there we have it, the fruit of our labor. A really nice 223 cartridge 55 grain FMJ Varmint Nightmare. We're using processed 556 brass federal small rifle primers. Good stuff. So here's what I like to do. I like to load up a box of ammo and run it through whatever gun it is that I'm gonna shoot the ammo in if I'm working up a new load or whatever. So today I'm shooting my kind of running gun style AR-15. I built this with, with Rainier Arms components. And sure, punching holes, you know, paper is good, but it's always nice to, to knock over cans. So let's, let's see how this goes. Ah, that feels good. So it looks like we're functioning pretty good. I'm gonna run a little bit more ammo through the gun. And, but next, let's take a look at the chronograph to see what kind of results we're getting for feet per second and, and consistency. So for this test, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out a magneto speed chronograph for the first time. Uh, 65 guys are real big on these. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, shoot a, a string of five here.
Wow, shooting the AR-15 is just totally fun, especially when you can see things fly off into the distance. Uh, the experience of running the auto drum on the Pro Checker 5 was actually really smooth. I really liked the way that the powder major worked with the press. Uh, the IRMR 4166 really metered well and performed well on the chronograph. It'll be interesting to try out the, the temperature insensitivity as we you know, swing through different seasons, that kind of thing. So that's it. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any action on Ultimate Reloader, please subscribe to the channel. Until then, happy reloading.